let's talk about garden planning. I have all these amazing tools that I'm so excited to share with you friends. But first and foremost, I just need you to know that there are so many ways to garden. There are as many ways to garden as there are gardeners, which is to say, there's a lot of us. You are in wonderful company and I am so grateful to be one of the many gardeners that you have in your life to ask questions of and to learn from and to share what you learn with. And yes, take everything with a grain of salt, experiment, be curious, be joyful, and let our gardens grow us as much as we grow them. So yes, here are a few questions to ask yourself when you are planning your garden that will make life that much easier. So what are the most important crops you're excited to grow? And when do you sow them? Where do you sow them? How much to sow? Let's talk about spacing and then let's take notes. So I'm gonna break each of those down. So first and foremost, what is the most important thing to grow? It is so important that you sow what you love and that you love what you sow. I can't tell you how many people ask me. <laughs> What should I grow? I should I, I, I should grow kale, right? And I'm like, well, if it <laughs> brings you that much joy, you should not grow kale. <laughs> I mean, I grow kale because I have to love kale. Um, and kale that you grow yourself tastes so much better than anything you'll find in a grocery store. But that being said, so what brings you joy? So if you're really motivated to grow rudbeckias, grow rudbeckias. If you're so motivated to grow all the different kinds of lettuce or chicories in the world, please do. So whatever you answer, however you answer that question, that is the most important thing for you to grow. And certainly, is it available otherwise? This is why we grow tons of fennel for ourselves because we just can't find that much other great fennel in our area. So. We grow tons of fennel. Um, and another consideration, sometimes often people are like, you know, if I, I can find this, but it's often really expensive. And I tend to steer people away from thinking about economics and gardening because there's just no way to compare, right? <laughs> there's no dollars that can describe the significance of what you're doing. Um, and if you're gardening just for the economics, you're missing out on the vast majority of what your garden has to offer. But that being said, that's a reality and part of the total equation. So yes, by all means, use that as a metric as well. But I tend to go through it in that order of what do I love and want to grow most? What is it hard for me to find otherwise with that final tier of what is just prohibitively expensive that I should be growing? <laughs> So next, we're going to talk about when to start what. So I shared this lovely little postcard earlier, and this postcard comes, perhaps you already have one, in the mail with every single one of our orders, compliments of fruition, because we love you. And it's not just a planting calendar, it's a baby encyclopedia. It has planting and also harvest, as well as whether to direct sow, to transplant something, if you can grow it over the winter as microgreens, yeah, there's a ton of info on here and you can actually download it in our blog um, and I would love to share it with you and feel free to share it as widely as well. It's for zones four through six. If you're in seven, simply add two weeks on either side of the growing season um, and you can do the math from there. It's a pretty handy little device. So when to sow what? And so there's cold hardy plants and there are cold tolerant plants. And right now, early spring, we've already planted peas, radish, arugula, kale, all kinds of things, but the cold hardy things. And those things, it we had frost the other day and in fact snowed an inch <laughs> and they're still coming up. They're undaunted and amazing. On the other hand, there are cold sensitive things like basil and beans, tomatoes and zucchini, and these would simply die and um, when planted in cooler soil and certainly as soon as the nights get below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is information you'll find on here. And I also wanted to share with you the backs of our packets have tons of information as well. And I also wrote this little book, Rise and Shine, Starting Seeds with Ease. And I wrote it a few years ago as a 25 page book. We just updated it. It's 40 pages now and full 
beautiful color. Here's 15 steps for spectacular seedlings. And right up at the front, there's this awesome section that really goes into the details of everything you'll find on the back of seed packets, ours and otherwise. And yeah, take a look. There's this tab on the top so that you can see, you know, when to plant it and how deep and you know what season ton germination temperature and depth tons of great info um, so that gives you great hints also you can download on our blog and it also is here in our lovely both in our rise and shine and in our perpetual calendar which i'll share with you too it has a direct seeding chart as well as on another page a transplanting chart so that has way more info tons of great stuff here in our um across the seasons perpetual calendar you'll open it up and yeah here are those transplant and direct so calendars and uh, charts as well so that is awesome great awesome information and how much to sew is always a great question you can't learn to bike <laughs> you can't learn to bike by like reading about it and by listening to me tell you about it on a video tutorial so so much of it is simply having the experience but know that some plants you can grow all season long so like kale of um, and Swiss chard parsley these are biennials that are only going to go to seed in the second season and so they you can plant them now in March even after the snow melts and you'll be eating them till Thanksgiving here in zone 5 and they are just gonna keep pumping out food all season long other things like cilantro and salad mix are on the other end of the spectrum where uh, you're going to sow them a month six weeks later you're har you'll have harvested them a couple times and then they're going to be done so you need to succession sow them multiple times every three four weeks we're sowing them in our fields so and there's the in-betweens with zucchini and I know for me I like to plant four or five kale plants honestly just for myself <laughs> and same with parsley and everyone on our farm so there's tons of food for me and because that's not just me eating it's me wanting to invite pe lots of people over for dinner and just being able when people visit the farm to send them home with lots of food so four or five plants for me personally <laughs> plus all the people that I want to be feeding is a lot of food um, two zucchini plants is good for me most humans one zucchini plant is more than enough for a family of four <laughs> and so you'll just have to get a sense of how much a given plant will produce and especially given the fertility you can always up the fertility with things like fish emulsion and we have our gorgeous granular organic fertilizer you can add the beginning of the season that will act as an organic slow release fertilizer um, but Honestly, I'm so excited and this is the biggest variable is just how much will you be able to produce with how many seeds but err on the side of slightly smaller go go bigger go home is definitely not a phrase that I generally recommend in gardening St keep it simple and keep it streamlined so that way you can keep it successful and without further ado I also want to encourage you to think about spacing as you're planning your garden because it's really easy when these seeds are so small and even your transplants are pretty small to be shoving them in your garden and having them like look more abundant initially by planting them closer together not a great strategy at all on the backs of the, those packets you'll see ah two feet between zucchini and two feet between cucumbers and tomatoes and seriously two feet is two feet and <laughs> respect that distance honestly if it's two feet between cucumbers I'll often I'll plant the cucumbers two feet away I'll plant a lettuce in the middle because by the time that lettuce is full head marvelous I'm cutting it off eating it that's when six weeks later the cucumbers have gone gangbusters and are taking over that area anyway so keep in mind those fun little be sure to check out our companion planting guide as well because that has tons of those little tricks and, and little tips like how to maximize those plantings without sacrificing ultimate spacing between planting because there's no I was just talking to a woman a few weeks ago that was like I just want to love ground cherries but I can't get more than four ground cherries off a plant <laughs> it's like wait how close are your ground cherries oh they're four inches away from each other <laughs> <laughs> we give our ground cherries two feet between each other and we get hundreds and hundreds 
hundreds off of one single plant. So spacing is everything. It's counterintuitive, but the more space that you give plants and the more fertility you give them, I mean, the fertility piece isn't counterintuitive. It's the space piece, right? Because we want there to be more, so we put more in, but then that competition above the soil and beneath the soil translates into stress, lack of health, and lack of abundance. So next I want to talk about notes because I'm not, I'm not a great note taker. I'm very much in the present moment like, oh yes, the kingfisher is back and oh good, I'm harvesting eggplants. Uh, but I wanted to show you this little tool because I have been in love with perpetual calendars since I was a little girl and we actually made a lovely perpetual calendar for garden planning and for just celebrating life here at Fruition Seeds. So garden plant, uh, pardon me, perpetual calendars have dates, but not days of the week. So that way they're relevant across the seasons, across the seasons. And we can say, here's 2020, and I'll have three different years on here so that we can see across the seasons, the trends of here's when I planted my tomatoes, here's when I planted them out, and here's when I started to harvest them, here's when I started to notice disease. And you can see in March already how much I am filling in this calendar, including when the killdeer return and when the skunk cabbage emerged and all kinds of those fun little things. And in the back, we also have this whole section so that you can fill in crop by crop. Because for example, with those tomatoes, if I wanted to flip back through the years and say, oh, here's all my tomato info, and just be looking for tomatoes specifically, all of a sudden, there's all this information and pages to pour through. So in the back, we made these specific sections so that you can say, here's tomatoes, and here's garlic, oh, and here's basil, and here are eggplant, and all kinds of things so that you can say, oh yeah, here's the variety name and seed source. Here's the date we sowed it outdoors, indoors, outdoors, the date we transplanted it, um, the planting spacing, number of plants, row feet, um, date the soil was worked, harvested, notes on insects, diseases, all kinds of, all kinds of space for all kinds of things. And again, enough room for plenty of seasons so that you can be using this across the seasons to help you track and see patterns as they emerge and amplify your abundance, adapt along with each season. And this is one of the greatest gifts of our attention, of all of our senses that we're cultivating in addition to the lettuce and tomatoes and all the delicious things of our garden. So there are just a few thoughts on garden planning for you friends and check out the full blog there's so much more and honestly i cannot recommend highly enough snagging these resources and you can find rise and shine as a free download on our website um, and you can also get it as this hard copy. This hard com copy we do ask a few dollars for, um, and I'd love to sign it for you. If that isn't too ridiculous, I'd love to write you a little love note, um, and or anyone else you'd like it to be inscribed to. Um, but yeah, I would love to share this with you because there is just so much information in here that talks about so much of all of these things and then some in such greater depth. And certainly our Seed Starting Academy addresses tons of them and our Flourish Garden Club is an incredible source with over 500 video tutorials on all these things at great length. So I just wanted to give you that tiny little taste of the things that I think of as we're planning our gardens and I hope that it helps. I hope that it more than helps. I hope that it brings you great joy, beauty and abundance. I hope that it brings you to a place of thinking ahead while looking behind, while being in this present moment and remembering all of our ancestors who have saved seeds for thousands of years, transcending time immemorial chaos unprecedented that we have since forgotten but these seeds remain and we remain and deeply embedded in the genetic codes of every cell of our being and every other living being on this planet is how to remain abundant even when it's not easy 
So I hope that you have all of these resources at your fingertips, friends, and with the curiosity and with the joy and the sense of adventure and exploration, you embark. Happy planting and happy everything.